What's up, what's good? It is your boy BQ. This is the lounge, a little bit of morning content for you guys. I've been wanting to talk about this for a couple weeks now. I don't know if this has hit social media. I don't know if it's hit the, the news sites. I don't know if Impact has t tweeted this out. I don't know if it's hit their Facebook. I haven't seen it. Maybe it just right over my head. I don't know. But um, Alicia Edwards the other day was doing a virtual signing uh, that she did very well in, by the way. But she was doing a virtual signing. Uh, I was watching. The, I, was, I was there present for it. And someone asked a question, and she said her and Eddie Edwards have both re-signed with Impact Wrestling for one year. So it's not two years. It's not three years. It's not something long-term. One year. Obviously, Eddie is the major player in that. Um, someone we want to see around for a long time. Stick around for the foreseeable future. He's a pillar of the company. I think Impact is trying to to pitch the Good Brothers as the faces of Impact Wrestling. And I don't think they are. I don't think it's working necessarily either. You can't just make someone the face when they don't have a history and they don't show that that love and desire for the company. You know, they've been they've been okay for the company, and that's not what I'm saying. But guys like Eddie Edwards, Moose, Sammy Callahan, uh, Rich Swan, like these these guys are like the faces of Impact Wrestling. You know what I mean? It was for a while it was you know Tessa Blanchard. All right, so they try to make the Good Brothers the faces. They're not really the faces. That's the way I see it. But Eddie Edwards is probably that guy who who is. So we want to see him be around for a while. I was watching uh, some some Impact clips when it was still kind of TNA from a couple years ago, just a few years ago. Thinking like, wow, like so much has changed in a short amount of time, where they've gotten away from every, with the exception of us watching you know Samoa Joe matches every other day on Twitter. They've got so away from so much of what it, what was TNA. You know what I mean? It's a, such a different company right now, and Eddie Edwards is like one of those, you know, those last pieces that that holds on to that time, and to that name, you know. And if he were to go, you know, it, it would be crazy. The question was also asked, and you know, and Alicia kind of put it out there that Impact Wrestling is the only home for them. Like that's their home. That's where they're comfortable. That's where. They know they know everyone. They obviously have the the you know the added benefit of working together. I think it's good to keep Eddie Edwards happy to have his wife employed there as well. You know that makes a lot of sense. Um, when they do things like when they have Allie, who was a big part of the company, and then release her husband, you know I don't know why that makes sense. You know from from a, a business standpoint. But um, that being said, it looks like he's going to be around for a while. It looks like he wants to be there. There's not a whole lot of interest in going elsewhere. So the, so these are good things. Um, then Alicia alludes to the fact that she, I think she's going to be doing more on screen to show what she can do and just do meaningful stuff, which I've been asking for for a while. Like, I don't want to see anyone in a company not do meaningful shit when they're on TV. It drives me crazy. Asked the question about Kimberly. It's clear that she, you know, the last several episodes we've been watching, she hasn't been there with Deanna and Susan. So, you know, I asked the question, what's going on with Kim? Because uh, I was, you know, she has one of the best entrances in, in Impact Wrestling. But she uh, suffered an injury the, the, on the last loop. I don't know if it was, I don't know if she was out for this whole set of tapings or just series of episodes. I don't really know because I don't know how many episodes they record at a time. But she did suffer an injury. I don't think it's major. But uh, hopefully we'll see her back soon. I asked the question about Chris Bay as well because he's been missing. He did suffer a minor injury. But it's un it's unknown if that's why he hasn't been on TV. Uh, but he does have Mike from the Impact Republic that does the podcast with me. And uh, com CombatRepublic.com. He was telling me that uh, Chris Bay is booked for an indie show. I think it's either the day before or day after Rebellion. So it seems like he's okay. But there, I guess there was a, a minor tweak there. So hopefully we'll see him back soon. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is that I was uh, doing some shopping on social uh, on social media on Pro Wrestling Tees the other day. And I thought, you know, I, I sent Lewis a message and I was like, have you ever noticed that Impact doesn't leverage Pro Wrestling Tees? And very few of the wrestlers do as well. He's like, you know, he said, yeah, I have noticed that. Merchandise and t-shirts are, are so hot in wrestling. And that's a lot of AEW's marketing strategy and their strategy in general is, uh, you know, pushing merchandise, getting, uh, you, you know, getting catchphrases onto shirts, 
you know, angles, hot angles that happen organically. How can we tur turn that into a shirt? You know what I mean? And it, it really, really works for them. And I was trying to do some shopping for, you know, Protestant tees for some impact guys and just their shirts are no good. You know, there's a few, I think Trey's got some good stuff. Uh, you know, Brian Myers, well, well, the major brother podcast stuff that sells really well. They, they've got some, some shirts, but you know, I'm looking at Moose, I'm looking at Rich Swan, you know, guys, like, these are not good shirts. You know what I mean? But you look at them too and you're like, this clearly is not a, a priority to a lot of the stars on our roster. And I don't get that. It, it's, it's really weird. But that's a, that's a wrestler's choice, you know what I mean? But I also feel like Impact Wrestling as a whole just doesn't, doesn't prioritize that. So let's talk James Storm's 1,000th match. What would BQ have done if he was sitting behind a, a desk there at Impact and they said, yo, let's get a campaign going for James Storm's 1,000th match? What would I have done? Because this is what they did do. They did free shipping for, I think, that week or that month. For James Storm Month, free shipping. But there's no new merchandise or anything that's like, must. I want that though. That that I want to buy that right now and take advantage of free shipping. There was nothing. Nothing came out. They were just trying to push, push some old DVDs off. Oh, you know, get some of this old James Storm shit. Now, there's a wrestling audience out there that does collect DVDs. Don't get me wrong. But it's the second dying, the second shrinkingest, the dyingest. Those aren't even those, those aren't even words, but they're the second shrinkingest form of media behind CDs. You know, but they're still like buy the DVD, buy, buy the DVD. It's it's a small percentage of wrestling fans that actually want that stuff. So what would BQ have done for the James Storm 1000th match? Big moment, right? I would have I would have done the free shipping. We'll keep the free shipping. I would have re released a limited edition James Storm 1000th match t-shirt something that you hired a real legit graphic designer to do something badass to commemorate that moment and then I would have thrown another deal on top of it and buy another shirt off the website any other shirt for an additional 10% off and we're going to throw an impact face mask in there too COVID mask they don't even make those they don't sell them why I don't know easy money Where's the face mask? Where's the coffee mugs? Where's the shot glasses? The easy shit that you can uh, create as merchandise on Shop Impact. It's not there. But that's what I would have done. Free shipping. Special James Storm t-shirt. Grab any other shirt off the site. 10% off. And we even throw in an Impact COVID mask for free. Easy, right? Easy stuff. I'm not a genius. Um, and I would have even taken a step further. I would have printed out the match graphic in like a 10 by 8 and uh, had James Storm autograph one side, Eric Young autograph the other, print a hundred of them. And they'll be labeled one of a hundred, two of a hundred, three of a hundred. Sell them for whatever the hell you want to. But for those people who like wrestling merchandise and memorabilia, you know, make it a hundred bucks. I don't know. Make it two hundred. When I was watching a virtual signing the other day and, you know, Alicia Edwards like, hey, here's here's ring, ring gear. There's people... You know, auctions, okay, 200 bucks, boom. You know what I'm saying? 150 bucks. Like, you don't think that putting it out there, a match graphic, printing it out real nice, autograph both guys, and it's commemorating this thousandth match, that, that thing wouldn't have a, a flown off the damn shelf. Easy shit, right, folks? Leverage the damn merchandise. You know, get, a, get it out ahead of things. It's just, it's just behind, the, behind the ball all the time. It drives me... Drives me crazy as a content creator, but um, that's what it is. Thanks for checking me out this morning. I'm your boy BQ. I'm out. Peace.